this event, new opportunities from natural wealth management, indicates that the spirit of this dialogue is not just to talk about the prospects and potential offered by the green economy in abstract, in abstract terms, but rather to identify concrete solutions that can be put in use to fully capture its benefits in a sustainable way. This event has been imagined and promoted by the Oslo Consortium, conceptualized and organized as a joint initiative of the Asian Development Bank, ADB, the Food and Agriculture Organizations of the United Nations, FAO, the Poverty Environment Initiative of UNDP and UNEP, PEI, the WWF Greater Mekong Program, and the Global Mechanism, we support by the Government of Norway and MacArthur Foundation. Behind the organization of this event, there have been several months of passionate and tireless work of a large number of people from each partner organization. Allow me to convey my greatest appreciation to all of them through their respective team leaders, Mr. Jay Mir from the Asian Development Bank, Mr. Hiroyuki Konuma from FAO, Mr. Paul Steele from UNDP, Mr. Geoff Blade and Mrs. Louise Gallagher from WWF, and last but not least, Mrs. C. Estese from the Global Mechanism. The fact that this private public dialogue is launched today has a special meaning, particularly for us in the Global Mechanism, because the 17th of June marks the adoption of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD, 19 years ago in 1994. Since then, this day is observed annually as the World Day to Combat Desertification. This year's slogan, Don't Let Our Future Dry Up, embodies the message that we are all responsible for conservation and sustainable use of our land and water resources. In his letter, the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon today urged the international community to fulfill the call of last year's Rio Plus 20 conference on sustainable development to avoid and offset land degradation. Land lies at the heart of social, political and economic life in most of Southeast Asia. The good or bad management of land, water, minerals and biodiversity, our natural assets, directly influences economic, economic development, human well-being, as well as the health of the environment. At Rio Plus 20, governments agreed that the green economy has the potential to ensure that natural capital is used in such a way that continues to provide the essential ecosystem services that sustain economic growth and prosperity today and in the future. More and more countries in the GMS are sit, setting out on just such a path, as illustrated, for example, by the Green Growth Roadmap of Cambodia, the recently established Green Growth Strategy of Vietnam, as well as the Green Economic Green Growth Initiative in Myanmar. All six nations in this region have committed to the development of a green, inclusive, and balanced economy through the GMS strategic framework 2012-2022. And as a result, both the public and private sectors are getting engaged in triple bottom line investments and market, and market mechanisms are emerging to convert them into viable operations. The objective of this event is to take stock of progress made so far in the transition to a green economy in the GMS. What are the emerging investment opportunity, opportunities, challenges and risks? What actions can further improve the investment climate? What role can public-private partnerships, for example, play in this regard? This public-private dialogue is intended to create an opportunity to recognize and explore emerging triple bottom line opportunities in natural wealth management share lessons from experience and increase awareness of viable options and enabling conditions for green economic development. The dialogue will consist of four days of presentations, panel debates, plenary discussions and breakout sessions, in which we will hear from decision makers and experts engaged in policy setting, development cooperation, business operations and capital investments. 
The dialogue will be articulated in two parts. Part one, today and tomorrow, will discuss options for transitioning to a green economy with a contribution from high-level government officials, development partners, investors and business leaders from the region and beyond. Part two, on Wednesday and Thursday, will provide a more technical and detailed overview of some of the leading approaches, methodologies and tools that can support decision-making on natural wealth management in the region. Embracing the principles and practices of a green economy requires adopting integrated and innovative approaches, technologies and risk management strategies. These, in turn, can inspire and ignite new business models that offer superior returns on investment as well as long-term economic, social and environmental gains. We hope that this dialogue will help catalyze public-private partnerships that will further promote and accelerate the transition to green economic development in the region. In closing, I would like to thank once again all the partners that have contributed to the organization of this event, and I wish all of you, dear participants, four fruitful days of consultations, networking, and inspiration. Thank you for your kind attention.